Okay. Um, you just came in. What's your uh, name? I'll get your. Yeah. Certainly. Okay. Anybody else? Saw it. So we're going to go through these, um, try to um, get them figured out, and uh, have, a, have a video. Okay, so the first one is, uh, okay. I'll, for, before I do it, I want to review um, what we're going to do today so that if anybody is, is uh, missing this, they can, uh, they can um, so we're going to start with by reviewing what we're up to what we're doing okay so uh first thing is um we're going to review the test and if you have any um problems if you missed anything you can hand back in a copy or however you want to hand it in of the reworked problems that you missed or half credit. All right, so that means if you miss 50 points, you get 25 of them back, okay? Uh, then we're gonna do a video today. And then at the end there is a, um, it's not a quiz, but there is a license plate of the um user of the of the guy that did the video okay he filmed the video here so there's a license plate and what is on the license plate what does the license plate say it's a it's a vanity license plate okay okay and that's 20 points that's your quiz and this is quiz uh five or quiz quiz five i think i'm not sure quiz four whatever it's the next quiz so you hand that in for 20 points and for 10 extra points what is the meaning and this doesn't have to be a page, this could be a paragraph, or this could be a couple sentences. What is the meaning of, or the significance of his license plate? So the meaning or significance of why he would do that. Right, so that's, that's that. And then we'll have a good vacation, come back, and then we'll do the next lab. We'll start with fresh stuff and we'll do one more stinky, thing and then we'll get on to some fun stuff. I hate to use the word fun because I know you're ready to graduate and anything is not fun when you're about ready to graduate. But okay, anyway, I will uh, try to make it as interesting as possible toward the end. And there's some good stuff toward the end and hopefully everybody will have some good, not good times, but at least you'll not worry about Laplace anymore. How's that? Okay, number one, uh, make a box and um, do in and out over here low and high up here and fill in the box and it's uh the delta x is 10 the delta y is 12 m is equal to delta y over delta x which is equal to 12 over 10 or 1.2 then you solve using the high or the low 15 is it to find b 15 is equal 1.2 times 12 which is the x value plus b b is equal to 0.6 and then cm is equal to 1.2 times 6.3 plus 0.6 or 8.16 okay any questions about number one anybody else come in Okay, number two. Any questions about number one? Number two. Um, so the, there's a feedback in the middle there, and that feedback is 
using rule number four, it is G1, G2. Okay, you multiply the top times G1, so G, G, it's G2 over one plus G2, H2. And then you multiply it by G1. Everybody follow that? That gets you the whole middle part. And it, that has a feedback as well, because you have a summation here and a, um, Okay, you're coming in with your X and you've got a feedback around here and you've got an H1. Here's my Y, here's my X. So Y over X is equal to this feedback again. So you basically are getting the feedback twice. Everybody see that? So it is this numerator, it's G1, G2 over one plus G2, H2 all over one plus h1 times that whole thing again g1 g2 did anybody see the basketball game last night much better last night than it was last week you know, i won by about eight or nine points instead of losing by one point but anyway it's beside the point that's why the jovial no that's why i'm kidding you Anyway, the next one is, this does not ask you to solve. It just says convert over to the frequency domain, to the S domain. And you have to be careful because this 8 over here is times S squared. And don't write F of X, just write X. Please don't write that other stuff. Minus S times a minus 7. Minus 4. Parenthesis plus 5 times S times x minus a minus 7. And that's as far as you had to take it. If you got that far, you got credit for it. Any questions about that? Okay, that's number three. If you went further, that's great. If you didn't, so be it, okay? You're Riley, right? Okay, Let's see if I can find you. Okay, so uh, you can hand in everything now or later or whatever. I don't care, but, but you can hand in it later. Okay, so that's number three. Number four, this is um, 2s squared minus 4s plus 12 all over that thing is equal to a over, it expands like this, a over s, a plus b over s plus 4 plus C over S plus 5. Standard way to do it, okay? So you carry this through. 2S squared minus 4S plus 12 equals A times S plus 4 times S plus 5 plus B times S. Did everybody see what I'm doing? It's the other brothers. It's the other ones that are doing plus C times S times S plus 4. Any questions about that? Let S equal zero, out plops A. 12 on the left is equal to A times 20. On the right, A equals 12 over 20, or 0.6. Any questions about that so far? Everybody see that? Let S equal minus 4. Minus 4 knocks out the A and the C, gets us the B. So 32 plus 16 plus 12 on the left is equal to B times minus 4 times minus 1. On the right, B equals minus 15. Any questions about that? Let S equal, this was minus 4. Let S equal minus 5. That's the third one. On the left, 50 plus 20 plus 12 is equal to C times minus 5 times minus 1, C equals 16.4, or thereabouts. Now you go back and you say A is 0.6, so you say it's 0.6 over S plus a minus 15 over S plus 4 plus 
16.4 over s plus 5. That converts to what? 0.6 over s converts to 0.6. Minus 15 or s plus 4 converts to minus 15 e to the minus 4t. 16.4 plus 16.4 e to the minus 5t. That's your final answer. That's number four. Any questions so far? Any questions at all? Everybody got that? Number five, this is a complete all the way from A to Z. Okay, so you have your Y double or second derivative plus two Y first derivative plus five Y equals zero. Y of zero is equal to five Y prime of zero equals minus one. So now you expand s squared y minus s times 5 minus a minus 1 plus 2 parenthesis 2, or excuse me, it's an s y, Ted. Two times s y minus 5 plus 5y equals 0. Sort and sift. y times s squared plus 2s plus 5 minus 5s plus 1 minus 10 equals 0. i equals 5s plus 9 over parenthesis s plus 1 quantity squared plus 2 squared. Now, there are two ways of doing this, and I'm going to show you both of them. Okay, first is the expansion one. 5s plus 5 would meet the exact example of or s plus 1 squared plus 2 squared would, would give me 5 times s plus 1 over s plus 1 quantity squared plus 2 squared, which would go to 5e to the minus t cosine of 2t. Everybody see that? But that leaves me with 4. That I've, I've got 4 left. What do I do with that? Well, that's 2 times 2 over s plus 1 quantity squared plus 2 squared, and that's equal to what? 2e to the minus t sine of 2t. So the combined of this is my answer, and that works. That's your final answer, doing it by the balancing act approach. The other way is with what? imaginary numbers, but this way works and it works well. And I'll show you in a minute that how well it works because the, the two answers do coincide, okay? 5s plus nine over that s squared plus s plus one under squared plus two squared, okay, is equal to k over s plus one plus i plus k starred over s plus 1 minus i, and we let s equal minus 1 minus i, and up comes what? 5 times minus 1 minus, excuse me, minus 2i, Ted. Okay, so minus 1 minus 2i, that's my 5s plus 9 equals k times minus 1 minus 2i, and then I add, okay, so it's k times s, which is this minus 1 plus 1, plus 1 minus 2i. Everybody agree with that? Now the minus 1 and the plus 1 cancel out over here and I've got minus 4i. So basically k is equal to 5 times minus 1 or 
minus 5, plus 9 is 4, and minus 5i, excuse me, I got a 2 in there, I, I keep leaving a 2 out, minus 10i over minus 4i, everybody agree with that? 4 minus 10i over minus 4i is equal to what? 2.69 at angle 21.8 degrees. Okay, so there's my answer, except that I gotta write it out. So your final answer this way is two times y is equal to two times 2.69. That's the two times k, e to the minus t, which is the, there's the one, that's my minus t, cosine, of 2t, where's, there's my 2, plus 21.8 degrees, okay? Now you say, why do you even care about checking this out? I want to check it out and make sure it's the same, because the tangent, the arc tangent of the coefficients up here, the 2 and the 5, arc tangent of 2 over fifths, is this number right here, and it is. So if you want to know, did I feel good about it when I worked it both ways that they, I had got the answer correct, I felt pretty good because they, 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 they came around and were the same. So everybody see this way of working it? I don't care which way you work it. You'll not see another one of these, I promise. But do you have a little bit better feeling that, that you have two different ways of working those problems? Any questions about that? This is 5.38 e to the minus t, okay? Any questions about that one at all? Any comments? Not the hardest one, but yet that did see if you were able to do that. Okay, this is number six. This is not quite as hard, but it is not the, what you probably would have expected. And I, I got a lot of different varieties of answers, but the right answer is this is A over S plus 1 plus B over S plus 1 quantity squared. That's the correct expansion of when you see a squared something, it's that plus the squared of it, okay? That's that rule. We didn't do this one a lot, but we did it some, and I felt like it was a valid question. So this is going to be the, the E, this is going to be the, the T, times e, all right? Everybody agree with that? Everybody see that? So this is, the answer here is gonna be something e to the minus one t, and this one's gonna be t e to the minus one t. That's the basic bottom line of how this is gonna work out. Just what are the numbers, right? So let's look and see what the numbers are. Okay, so basically we write it as six s plus, six x minus three, equal to a times s plus 1 plus b. Everybody see that? All right. Now, let s equal minus 1. That'll get you one of them. That'll get you b. b is equal to minus 1 minus 3 is minus 9. Straight old, straightforward. Let her rip. That's number. That's how you get B. How do you get A? Not quite as easy, except for the fact that by observation you can say, how many S's are there on the left? There's six. How many are there on the right? There's A of them. So if you say, let's look at the S to the one terms. How many of them are on the left? How many of them on the right? They have to balance. You, you catch it with the balancing act, okay? Any questions about that? So you got it. Six e to the minus t minus nine, t e to the minus t, and you're done. Any questions? that one. Well, 
I don't see anybody pull out a revolver or anything. Hopefully that doesn't happen. So hopefully you feel like you you got something out of it. And also realize I'm giving you back half of your points. So if you got massive points off, you can get half of them back by working the ones you missed and handing it in to me after the break if you want. You don't have to hand them in to them today, tomorrow. Please don't email them to me. It takes me forever to get an email, print it off, get it correct, make sure that I do that. I do it, but I don't like to. So anyway, please don't. Just hand it in on paper if you can. Yes, sir? So do you just want the paper itself, or do you want the exam type? I don't care about the exam. Just a, a, the paper with the ones worked out. And honestly, whatever you hand back, I'll give you the points. Okay? I'm not going to go through and take points off again. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say, I gave you the answers. Hopefully, you can write them down in some format that looks halfway like what and then we go forward. I'll give you, my point is I'll give you half your points back. Okay, so I'm gonna hook this other thing up. This is a, this isn't gory, but it's it's got, there, there's a point to this um, video and I hope that you don't, and you can leave if you want to, but I hope that you kind of take it seriously because I, I hope that you, you get something out of it. Hopefully there's some good that comes from this. And I'm, I'm not trying to uh, impress you or whatever. Now, this was filmed ha actually here at the university at, up in 2390. Um, and uh, it's about eight, nine years old. It's not new, but it's still very relevant. And um, it very well could save your life. Uh, I don't want to be gory about it, but it, it could actually save your life. This is Bob Nicholson and... Um, Hazard that's out there. Um, my background is. I want to see if I can get the sound going here. Before, before I get too far, I want to see if I can get the sound going. Um, let's see if I can get this sound going here. I can, hopefully, I can. I'm certified by NFPA to explain this. Um, I was on the International Medical Board for. Six years, so I've, I've kind of had an interesting background. Can everybody hear that? A lot of things that has occurred electrically. Um, I was in this building 30 years ago, and it was basically an empty building. And we started a company called Solar Cells, which is today called, you know, for solar. For solar. There were four of us that started it. And that area directly behind you is where we started. It. And we actually had some furnaces and stuff in the highway area where we actually did the work. So it's kind of weird to walk back in and see everything change. I think the other thing that I want to explain to you is there's hazards electrically that electrical people deal with, and it happened to me. The scars that are on my arms occurred from an accident that occurred way back then, and I was that's not good for me. Uh, uh, but I was in St. Vincent's Burn Center. This is very serious when you get burnt, and this particular hazard is rather complex. So I'm going to take you in an area where you have not studied. You have not studied. You know electricity very rudimentary. You Everybody hear that? Probably. You take controls, correct? It's a PLC course. You're, you're talking to PLC. People are taking a PLC course right okay. now. Okay. So That's me, by the way. Used to those wires, right? Yeah. We're talking about the wires and power this. So we're going to be talking about power and what it means to you. Here's the, here's the problem in the United States. And it will even include you. If you go into a facility and you work on, if you work anywhere in a facility, I'm going to say the computer people, but if you are just working on computers and you're not exposed to any kind of electricity, which you are exposed here, unless this is below 50 volts, the minute that you work on 50 volts and above, you're in a federal standard under law. This is where your, your um, employer has to decide to be careful because everybody in this room has a 1 in 300 chance of going home. The minute you start working on electricity, you have a 1 in 10 chance. It is 30 times more dangerous to work on electricity than any other field in the country because of the nature of, of the beast. Because of that, there are federal regulations that says once you cross that bound of 50 volts, below 50 volts they believe that you, you will not be killed by the voltage. At 50 volts and above they believe you will. So I'm going to show you a couple different uh, uh, instances that you've got to realize how this works. And realize if you're going to go in the industry and you're going to be working on electricity, be careful because um, 
you may be here. And you better make sure you know what to ask people. For example, when you're working on electricity, you should be wearing certain types of gloves. And we'll kind of get into that as far as the shock thing. But this is kind of spooky for companies to realize that uh, it, is, it is 30 times more dangerous because it is a very skills for trade. Uh, the electrical industry goes, I'm talking about power-wise, goes from this to a nuclear station with everything in between. There is nobody that knows everything. So that's where people start specializing. But the minute that you go over that 50 volts, it doesn't matter whether you're working at 50 volts or 5,000 volts. You're in a federal standard. Okay, shock. Everybody ever felt a pump in their life? Right? Everybody's felt one, right? Okay. Let me explain to you how close you came from being dead. And I'm going to explain it. Um, a shock is something the electric current going through the body. I think you can probably figure that out. All of you in here have had Ohm's Law, correct? I'm assuming sometime or another. Well, I'm going to show you how Ohm's Law, how it relates to safety. I'm not talking about resistors now. We're talking about the Ohm's Law related to shock. Electrocution is the fourth leading cause of industrial fatalities in the country. It is very, very dangerous. This is the one that kills a lot of people. Now, it takes 75 one thousandths of one amp, 75 milliamps, you know what milliamps are, correct? 75 milliamps, and you're dead. The outlet that's on this wall has a 20 amp breaker somewhere in the panel supplying the wall outlet. So that's 20,000 milliamps. 75 one thousandths and you're done. So it does not, don't underestimate electricity. 110 kills more people than all other voltages combined. There's more of it. So if you think you're only working on 110 and I'm not working on 480 or higher voltages, don't, don't kid yourself. Here's what happened. I want to explain how this works. When you fell a poke, you had 1 to 10 one thousandths of 1 amp passing through your body. Now I'm going to give you an example. If this, if this right here was something like an energized piece of equipment, and I have to walk up and touch it, it could be an outlet, it could be a plug, it could be anything. Here's what's happening. So I have to draw it up here, but it might be a little hard to see. I think I can describe it. This outlet right here has 20 amps that's coming from a panel that's down the hallway. Okay? There's a, there's a power panel somewhere. What happens when I touch this, 20 amps, comes through the power system and it goes into my body. It goes into my hand. It goes through my body and it goes through my feet. The internal resistance of my body is based on a lot of factors. But that resistance starts knocking down the current on the wall. Okay? Now what it does is it goes through my socks. It goes through my rubber shoes. These are not voltage graded shoes, so the current is going to go through them. It's going to go through that carpet. It's going to hit the concrete. It's going to run down the hallway on the concrete. Concrete is not non-conductive. It is eventually going to find the panel that's serving this room. It's going to go in the ground wire. It's going to run down that ground wire. It's going to go all the way back to the transformer that's feeding this building. That's a circuit. You know about circuits. When you add up the resistance between my finger and that ground rod that's somewhere <coughs> on the site, you add up all that resistance, that's current. So what happens is, not much current's going to flow through my body. So when you felt a poke, you felt one to ten one thousandths of an amp actually passing through your body. All of the rest of it was taken up by the resistance. Now, if I would have touched this, and I would be standing outside, I'd be dead. Because I would not have the carpet, the mat, the concrete, I, the closer I get to that ground rod, the worse this is going to get. So understand that when you get up to one-tenth of an amp, it starts shoving down your heart. You get up to one and a half amps, it starts burning the inside of your body like a, like a hot dog. So don't underestimate current. Again, it's how you're grounded. I can, I can hang on the high voltage wires out here in my bare hands, because those wires are not insulated, and they won't hurt me. Just like a squirrel because I'm not grounded. The minute that squirrel touches that wire and his back feet touches the pole, there is no more squirrel because there's a path directly to the ground and that path of current, if the squirrel is in it, the squirrel is dead. 
So the key you've got to remember is how are you going to be grounded and how do you prevent being grounded? All of this stuff happens. Voluntary falls, heat damage, fibrillation of your heart, exit wounds, uh, brain malfunction, muscular contractions. Um, it happens immediately. It happens after a while or it's long term. This damage right here can, can show up years later. So if people get electrocuted, they should go and be tested because this is a problem. Here's your Ohm's law. So this should give you something you understand. Well, now you're understanding this has something to do with something other than resistors and printed circuit boards. It has to do with people's lives. It really kind of depends. Your dry skin is not very conductive. It's 100,000 ohms because my hands are dry. The minute that your hands get wet, you drop to 1,000 ohms. Inside your body, you are 70% water. Therefore, you're going to conduct electricity real well on the inside of your body. In your head, and he'll probably agree with this, you're basically mush. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're only at 100 ohms inside your head. So again, the pro there is actually laws that will say you cannot take an extension cord and plug it into another extension cord if your hands are wet. Because the minute you do that, it can track. Do you understand that water will not conduct electricity? Anybody know that? It will? It won't. It won't. Why not? Pure water. Pure water won't. Demineralized water, the only thing that makes current go through water is the minerals. So when you see a high voltage substation, do you know how they clean it? Think of something really stupid. How do they clean it when it's live? A water can. And they just let it happen. And it will all come down because it's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to conduct anything. Okay, so here's what we were talking about. How are you connected to the ground? You can be connected to the source. It can go through your body in different paths. It can go out your hand. So if I touch this and I touch something that's grounded, it goes right through my body. This is why it's so dangerous at home to be working on something and touch the sink. A sink is connected to the water, which is connected to the ground. It's a direct connection. That's why there's ground fault there. You can be connected to the ground by way of your feet. You can step on electricity, and you can actually step on a grounding source. When I was in a burn center, it blew a guy's feet off. It can go in your hand, and it can go out your foot. It's got to, it, if, if it can't get out of you, it can't hurt you. You can stand on a high-voltage band, and you can grab right a hold of it with your hand, and it won't hurt you as long as it can't get through my feet. If no other part of my body is touching the earth, I can't be hurt. But that's the key. Are you sure that there's no connection to ground? Because it'll find it really, really fast. So electrically, what that has to happen in the industry is you have to wear gloves. OSHA, I train the OSHA offices in Toledo. <coughs> you are mandatory, you must wear voltage-rated gloves to prevent the electricity from getting in your hands. If it can't get in your hands, it can't get in your feet because it can't get in your body, okay? That's what happens when it comes out. It makes a hole. If it comes out, it blows a hole in your skin because it's traveling inside your body. Now this guy right here, this isn't a grocery out. Hopefully this will run. And I gotta make sure this is on. This is one of the ones. What I want you to realize is he's going to touch that wire and down, down the stream here, down way, maybe a mile away, there's a transformer. That transformer has a grounded connection that goes down to the earth. So what he's going to do is the current's going to come on that wire, down his body, down that metal car, to the rail, down the rail, to the wood, into the wood, into the dirt, across the dirt to the ground bed. That's the connection. Now that connection can be a mile away, it doesn't matter. But when he touches it, there's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now the key is this. 
How old are you? 31. That means you're dumber than a box of rocks. <laughs> okay? At this age, don't ask me why, electrically, these are the people that get killed the most. Do you know why? Because you think you're invincible. You can date four women at the same time, you can drive like a bad man. And I don't know what you're doing with electricity, but this is crazy. Now when you get older, back here, how old is the professor? Right there, you got I'm here? 60, 66. Okay, he either doesn't do anything, <laughs> or he tells him to do it. But by this time, he's smart enough not to be killed by it. Okay, so statistically, I don't know why, but watch your age. It doesn't matter how big you are. Some people say, I've seen big guys go up so I can take that, and they do something really stupid. That right there, he bit that thinking that was dinner. Now, I gotta ask, who's the star student here? Oh, it must be you. <laughs> He's got a pink shirt on, so I gotta ask him. What does this teach you about electricity? You get extra credit if you can answer. Does anybody want to help him? Because I mean, he's, he obviously is the best student. Size doesn't matter. You never work barefoot. <laughs> when he picked that, the current went in his leg, doesn't have shoes on, Direct it to the ground, it traveled through the ground until it found the grounded connection of where that transformer is. I don't know where it's at, but it found it. It went through the dirt and it. And when it did that, the current went through his body. Now, this isn't to gross you out, this is to make a point. Look at this. Electrocution, 80% of the fatalities are burn related on the inside of your body. You think of someone being electrocuted and the, I don't know, the brain goes dead or something like that, the heart stops. Here's what's actually happening. The current will go into your skin. It'll travel on the nerves and tendons in your body. It'll travel until it can find where the connection is to ground. So it's using your, your, it's using your body now as a conductor. Your body is not meant to have current going through it. It's now what happens is a few days later, the tissue starts to die. Now, if this happens to run through your heart, your liver, your kidney, or any other part of your body, that's what the inside of your body is going to look like because you're being cooked from the inside. Now, remember, this happens in a fraction of a second. It doesn't happen. You don't have to hold on for an hour. It happens very, very quickly. Isn't that fun? The other thing that electrocution can cause is falls. The first thing that a person does when they get shocked is they, they pull back. They, they could be on a ladder. They could fall. Falls actually have killed as many people as the electrician because people actually fall. And the electrician, uh, electrical doesn't hurt them, it's the fall that kills them. So be careful. Anybody know what art flash is? The actual phenomena of it. Now, don't feel bad because when I do this class in front of electricians or even engineers, electrical engineers that have graduated in electrical engineering have no idea what this is. Unless they happen to be a power engineer. Now, now we're going back into a specialty now. You've graduated from the university, you're going by the way of power. It's a whole different animal when you're talking about power. So I'm going to explain to you what Art Flash is. Art Flash is a phenomenon that got me burnt. I was four feet away from it. It blew my eardrum out. It blew every light out of the building. I was in a basement. I'm either dead blind or blew every light out because I can't see. I had gloves on. I wasn't even doing the work. I had little leather gloves on. They burnt the gloves to a crisp, but my hands never got burned. Then I went to the burn center, then they give you morphine, then you throw up, and then away you go. They give you a putty knife, and they tell you to get the skin off. Now, what arc flash is, is this is the thermal part of an arc flash. A blast is the pressure part of an arc flash. So think of a firecracker. You throw a firecracker on the ground, you can see it. That's the flash. You might even feel the heat. That's the, that's the blast part, excuse me, the, the arc flash part. The part that you hear and the part that you feel, if it's a big enough firecracker, is the blast part. Both of these can be fatal. Both of them can kill you. There is clothing to protect you against this. There's nothing to stop that. So I'm going to show you. So I'm going to show you what an arc flash is going to look like, and then I'm going to explain what it is. And let's see what happens here. Okay, this is what an arc flash looks like if you are not wearing protective clothing. Here's what it's going to do. 
This mannequin is wearing polyester top, shirt, and pants, targeting category two here, a large arc, and an immediate fire. And notice that the back of the garment is on fire immediately, even though the arc never hit him in the back. Stop, drop, and roll is not going to put this out. This fire is too aggressive for that. The pants are on fire as well. It's hard to see right now, but when our firefighter moves the mannequin, you can clearly see that the pants are ignited as well. And the shirt within seconds is almost completely burned. Now, I want you to look at, you're going to see this in slow motion, but I want you to look at something. And the shirt within seconds is almost... Look at this panel. That is now plated with copper. That can go into your lungs. Now, I'm going to start this and I'm going to ask you some questions. And he can't answer because he might know the answer because of his background. Completely burned answer. off the mat. Here you have a split screen, slow motion. Okay, so what starts this? A what? A short. Correct. A short means what? What to what to what to what to what to what? Can you make that up? There are three phases. If one of the phases touch another phase, or if one of the phases touch the ground. Now, if you have a phase going to ground and it's, it's positively connected, that's called a bolted fault. You won't see this. It's when there is not a bolted fault, it's called an arcing fault, which means now the current tries to go through the air. When it goes through the air, it starts ionizing the air, and it causes a plasma. So you're seeing a plasma that's being created by a short. I want you to change the word short and try to get used to the word fault. Short, fault, potato, potato. You get used to it. Now watch what happens. As this fault begins, you at 3,000 frames a second, you get a terrific look at the art. Comes out, hits the mannequin, and bounces to his right and left and down, but never gets his back. Now, if you don't have protective clothing on, first of all, OSHA will be rather upset with your employer because you have to. If you open that panel, you have to have a certain level of protection against that heat because you won't be around otherwise. And in a moment here, as the arc starts to subside, you'll see the garment on fire as the smoke okay. clears and starts to rise. What, what turns a short off? disconnect. Kind of. Give me another word. What turns a short off? What turns a short off at your house? A breaker. A breaker, use the word overcurrent device. It can be a fuse, it can be a circuit breaker, it can be a relay, it can be different things that let current through it. When the current is going through upstream from this, there is an overcurrent device. The overcurrent device will <coughs> shut this power down during the time that it's thinking about it, this is occurring. So eventually, this is going to go away. An outstanding look as pieces of burning and melting polyester cotton are being thrown away from the mannequin on fire, and the smoke's lifting from his knees on up, and you can clearly see the garment on fire. This sort of an incident is going to result in catastrophic or fatal body burn. These catastrophic and fatal injuries can be prevented by wearing the appropriate PPE, including flame-resistant fabrics. Okay, so now we're going to say, Here's what OSHA says that every employer has to do. This is what JDRM does. We do engineering studies to figure this out. We know what the energy is that's going to come out of that box. We now tell people wear a certain level of clothing that's going to go up against that heat. That heat is in calories. So you're going to see how this clothing really will work. It's amazing. This mannequin is wearing Westex Ultra Soft pants and lightweight knit shirt. You have our art. You can see a huge amount of old metal, even in real time, all over the floor and thrown an enormous distance from the disconnect. Some of that old metal ended up in excess of 40 feet away. But again, no fire on the garments. No break open. All right, here we have a split screen slow-mo, 3,000 frames a second. The arc at first is at a torso event. You can see a huge amount of old metal being thrown a huge distance from the arc gap over his left shoulder. Meanwhile, the arc has hit the mannequin, traveled down the body, and becomes the... You have to have a face shield on. The face shield is thermally rated. The face shield is amber to protect your eyes. You have to have a sock underneath that. You have to have your hands covered. Any part of your body that's exposed will get burned. Any part of it. Now, this is, this is exactly what they do at a steel mill, except there are three carbon electrodes that are 18 feet, 18 inches across, and 30 foot tall. They bring them down into a big pot of ground-up steel, and they short it out deliberately. And it starts melting, and it melts anything that's there. It's 36,000 degrees. It's going to melt the steel, and eventually they pull a chute, and there's your liquid steel. So this is what a steel mill looks like. They said, this is not a steel mill. This is a person now. 
primarily a lower body event. That's copper and steel an flying. Enormous amount the of molten metal now is being thrown up in the air. It's going to land 20, 30, 40. Feet. What you don't want to do is approach anybody when those panels are open, because if you don't have the protective clothing on, you're going to get it. Feet from the disconnect. Look also at the floor on the left hand portion of your screen, the pulled back portion. Look at the amount of molten metal. It's literally painted. Almost the entire floor is armed with molten copper, and yet the arc's still going on, and there's an equal or greater amount of molten copper still in the air. This is a huge amount of molten metal. And again, this molten copper is a minimum of 1900 Fahrenheit, more than twice as much energy as is necessary to ignite non-FR copper. Now, remember that little triangle. This is all part of it. Shock is all part of it. You do not have these hazards if you're a carpenter. you got other hazards. Not this one. Now I'm going to show you a larger. These faults get larger and larger. This is going to be a larger one, then I'll explain it in a minute. This mannequin is wearing West Texas Ultra Soft 40 carry flash suit, and he's up on the ladder. Because the ladder is this what happens if an electrician's up the ladder. So we're faulting the upper bucket of the motor control center. It's a 45.7 calorie arc. It's a very large arc. There's a ton of molten metal coming out in all directions, but there is no fire on the garment. You see when our firefighters come in and turn the mannequin around that there's also no break open, showing that even in a 45 calorie arc, the ultra soft provides sufficient protection. We get a look at our split screen slow motion, and at 3,000 frames a second, this is a 14 cycle arc, you get a great look at the pulsing and pulsing of these cycles, and you see that the molten metal comes out as a wall. This is unusual. You can now see pressure. It's all the way around this. That is the, the part that you hear. That happens to be the pressure wave, ultrasonically, it's, it's moving in front of that, that light wave, and it is, it's strong enough to break bones in a person's body. That's the part that can blow you off the ladder, that's the part you hear. So this is gonna go on for a while until something turns it off. The previous clothing would not, would not withstand this. This clothing is much thicker. This guy survives this because he's got that suit on. Feet, but Oh, there's a wall of molten metal going in all directions, and the arc eventually defeats the sides of the MCC as well, and we get the arc plasma out to the right and left of the mannequin. If you're trained, and you're dressed, and you know what you're doing, you probably are not going to have an issue, but it can always happen. Exactly right. If you know what you're doing, you wear that beekeeper suit in those kind of situations. You will not get, you will not get hurt, period. Okay, these are the three most important slides to explain this. And you will understand this better than most electrical engineers that have not studied power. I'm going to use water to explain this. So it'll be a very good representation. This lake right here is an enormous volume of water. We're, we're going to call this your transformer. This is the transformer for the building. In that transformer is 50,000 amps, depending on the size of the transformer. That's called short circuit current or fault current. It's in the transformer. It's there, but it's not in the building. So here's this big reservoir of energy or water. This, this dam right here is the main service for a building. So this service might be a 2,000 amp panel board that's inviting 2,000 into the building to do work. So 50,000 here, 2,000 is being in the building. That splash right there is one circuit breaker in that panel that might be a 400 amp circuit breaker or fuse. It goes down the wire, so you know what impedance is, correct? Impedance is going to start knocking down the fault current. Think of it as resistance, impedance. So the longer this is and the smaller the wire, it's going to start changing the amount of energy that's going to move down the wire. So that water is, is a wire. That 400 amps is going to go to a sub-panel. This is the sub-panel. That is one breaker inside of the sub-panel now, that gate. So we're going to call that 100 amps. It's going to go down a wire, and it's going to go to a panel where somebody is working, and we're going to call it the bridge. Okay? So right now, the only hazard that there is is electrocution. If you touch something right there, you're going to be electrocuted. There is no arc flash because there's no fault. The fault has to occur here. Either a person creates it or equipment creates it. Something has to create it. Now, here's the spooky part. <coughs> There's the reservoir, which is the transformer. There's the sub-panel. The instant that this fault occurs here, 
as the speed of electricity. Anybody know that speed? Really fast. Put that on the test. Um, this 50,000 amps automatically comes in the building because it thinks that you need more electricity, more load. So it'll go right past this service and will not trip it. It'll run down this wire, 50,000 amps. As it goes down the wire, think of it like running down a tube. The longer it goes, the less water is going to get there. The more impedance there is on the wire, the less it's going to get further down the line. So now there's 35,000 amps here. If that device right there is a circuit breaker or a fuse that's rated to clear 35,000 amps and it does it very quickly, then this person may not even see an arc flash. They may see a little teeny spark because that shut the energy off before it got to them. The problem is, if this takes one-tenth of one second to open the circuit, it's going to allow 30,000 amps past it, right to there. Now the arc flash is going to occur. You're in it. I don't think a tenth of a second is a long time, but it is an eternity in an arc flash. The arc flash is going to begin, and then it will eventually get shut off when that turns it off. But the problem is, it's going to be right there. The transformer is going to get you. So what I try to tell electricians, when you open anything up that's three-phase, that transformer is staring at you on the other end of that wire. It doesn't matter where you are in the building. It, it is looking at you, and it will come if there's a fault. So this is the big danger about this. You don't know what this is. You don't know the length of this wire. You don't know how fast this is going to react. So I'm going to show you a little bit about this. This guy right here is putting a large breaker into a panel. Here's the What's second. What's going to happen is this breaker is going to fit. There's going to be a short. He's cranking a handle. The breaker is slowly going in. It's going to touch the live bus. If there was nothing wrong with the breaker, there wouldn't be a problem. There is a short in the breaker. So somewhere outside the building, the transformer is going to deliver fault current. And it's going to come out of the box. It's not going to be a mannequin now. It's going to be a person. So now, he doesn't get to go home. So they call his wife up and tell him, we got to talk. Wrong safety equipment. Should not be doing it live. He should have checked the breaker. Something's wrong with the breaker. But when it touches, it's going to go off. So he sees a bright white light like I do, except he never comes out of it. He never comes about. Now, this is an interesting software that I'm going to make some points with to you. Now, whereas before I showed you a video, now I can control everything with this, this software. Here's voltage. I'm going to put it at 480 volts. It doesn't matter. Here's fault current. You now know what that is. That's the transformer. I'm going to put it way down to 3,000 amps. The clearing time of the upstream device is going to operate in 0 0.01 seconds. I'm going to move you in front of the panel. I'm going to put you about 18 inches away from the panel. And I'm going to create an arc flash. Now, the reason why the guy didn't get hurt is, number one, there wasn't much energy. And it wasn't there for long. It was very, very fast. Now the problem is this. In reality, this is not what's going to be up there. There's going to be something greater. And there might be some circuit breaker or fuse that doesn't react as quickly. So now what I'm going to do is go over here. And now what's going to happen, I'll slow it down. The energy is going to come out of the box. When the energy comes out of the box, it ignites a person's clothing. And then the circuit breaks at any moment because he's kind of sleeping. That's what happens when you've been in class too long. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to take you and we're going to put you over here. And we're going to put clothing on you. Now you have a specialized set of clothing. So now, the clothing goes up against the heat. It doesn't go up against a particle. If anything is solid, it's 750 miles an hour, you're standing in front of a cannon. It's going to go directly through the person. It's only protecting against heat. Okay, so now we'll put it back over here. I'll leave later look at this. This is kind of weird. Watch this. Now you're looking through the glasses of the guy. You've got to write the software to see. That's what the glasses look like. Okay. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull you back to here and make a point. Right now this guy is not being hurt. I'm going to put him right here. The problem is, now think about this, a shotgun with bird shot in at the 50 yard line and you're at the goal line, you're going to feel it, but it's not going to kill you. The closer you get, now I'm not going to change any of these factors. I'm just going to move you closer. So now you're closer. So it's like walking towards a shotgun. The closer you get, the worse the energy is. You half the distance, you double the energy. So you don't want to be any closer than you have to be. All right, now I'll make some other points here. I'm going to pull this guy back. He's got a long life. Okay. I'm going to turn this energy up. And I'm going to, now you know what this is. That's fault current. That's from the transformer. That's how long the over upstream device is going to take to trip. I'm going to put heavier clothing on the guy. Now, this, let's say this is you and you want to get rid of Ted. So we've got to get rid of Ted. <laughs> let's get rid of him. Because you know how they look over your shoulder? Got your clothing. Sorry, boss. <laughs> You're not supposed to approach people when the panel's open. First, first of all, he can't see. So we're, we're going to be off him, so he's gone. <laughs> he's now, a this guy walking up. That's what that is. I'm going to take it Got all the way up to 60,000 amps for two seconds. <clears throat> the clothing will, will take up to 40 calories of energy, which you'll see in a minute. And then the clothing is going to fail, too. There is no... There is no permanent solution to the clothing. Now, now I'm going to take this guy and move him back just a little bit, and I'm going to have no PPE on it. 60,000 amps. Anybody want to tell me what's going to happen to this guy with no PPE? Disintegrating, right? Here we go. Nothing. Why? Huh? I turned the time down. Now, what I want you to think about is this. If you have your shirt off, and it's 12 o'clock noon in August, and you walk outside, that's energy. And if you walk outside, walk right back in the room, that's time. Energy and time. I don't get a sunburn if I walk back in the room. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down to 30,000 amps, half the energy, but I'm going to raise the time. So now you're going to go out at 1 o'clock. So I'm starting to go down, but I'm going to be out for an hour and a half. Time's going up. Now watch what happens. Less energy, more time. You're in trouble. Take it to an extreme now. I'm going to turn the energy down to one quarter of what the energy was in originally, and I'm going to turn the time up. So now you're out there at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Sun's going down, but you're going to be out for three hours. Now the time goes up. So now, what I'm trying to make a point with this is that what's going on is energy and time. Now, the only thing you guys know about energy and time right now, probably, is you ever use timing circuits? Right? That's time. Energy would be probably, I don't, you're really not dealing with energy like this. Okay? But, it, but you can see what I'm getting at. Energy and time are the big factors here. Now, Here's what's happening when you see that arc flash. It's 35,000 degrees. It's four times hotter than the surface of the sun because it's arcing through the air. The only thing hotter than this is Davis Vesey, is a nuclear reaction on the Earth. The molten metal is what catches the clothing on fire. The arc flash crystallized my skin, which was bad. I did not have, I had a short sleeve shirt on, and right there is where the short sleeve shirt stopped. Luckily, I did not have a heavy shirt on. I was far enough away. It crystallized the shirt and it fell off. If it would have been a heavy shirt, it would have ignited. It would have caught fire. There would have been enough fuel for it to catch fire. It did not. That molten metal bounced off here and burnt my skin. The atomic bomb on the drop into Hiroshima was 12,000 degrees on the ground. It's three times hotter than the bomb when it goes off. Track it. Nothing can stop it. There is no clothing except that. Intense light will blind you. If you do not have a face shield on with this amber color on there, it will wreck your retinas. 
the pressure, you saw pressure. A large arc flash can take a 160 pound person and accelerate them by pressure from zero to 110 miles an hour in 51 thousandths of one second. That's getting hit really hard, really fast. Copper will expand 67,000 times its volume and that turns into vapor and it goes in your lungs. Now you remember that little triangle over here? That's what electricians, this is what electricians work on every single day. Now it may, it may get them, it may never get them, but the point is, it is there. The fact of the matter is it's there. This is what fault current looks like coming in a building. Watch how the transformer reacts to this. The wires aren't even going to like it. The sparks were flying in southeast Portland today. The fault is in the building. Transformer is delivering full current. Transformer blowing. Eventually, it's going to blow up the transformer or blow up the fuses. And fire crews trying to keep onlookers up wind and the smoke because electrical fires. The wires are going to start melting. Fire was limited to the electrical equipment in the transformers. The building itself did not burn. Damage estimated at hundred thousand dollars. Now, here's the substation. You got one right over right here, right? If that substation has a fault, where does it get its fault current? David Spessy. From the grid. The grid goes back to David Spessy. David Spessy is going to give fault current to the substation. It's going to start melting the entire substation. It'll melt anything that's in there. Any steel, anything. Right down to the concrete. It burned a hole in the transformer and it blew up. Now the wires are still hot. But you're not, the wires are not touching anything. There's no fault, because the fault now has been cleared. Because it's not touching. The wire's not touching, it's not touching the ground. This guy right here is throwing a cable over top of a log truck. He's going to lash down the cables, or the, the logs. He snags that line right there. So what do you think comes down? Fault current. Fault current is going to go down here, it's going to go right down that line. Now, if you're at home and the, the lights go on and off three times, you know why that is? There's a branch probably touching that. That's why they trim the trees. And what it is, it's a reclosure or an electronic breaker turning it back on three times. It's trying to blow the branch up. And if the branch blows up because the fault current would go here, down the branch, down the tree, to the roots of the tree, all the way back to the ground and it would blow the branch up. After the third try, it stops because it's something other than the tree. In this case, it, it can't blow this up. It fault current melts the truck. So then you gotta call your boss and say, I'm gonna be late getting back. <laughs> it's very serious. Motion li liability, lawsuits, all of this. Very, very serious. This guy is putting a breaker in without a face shield on. You will not have a face. You will not have eyes. You have got to wear glasses. There's a person looking over his shoulder, watching him do the work. He's going to get it too. He shouldn't be there. Okay, again, burns can go up to four to three burns actually burn inside your body. It burns muscles and tendons. I have that second burns. That's painful because you still have nerves. Once you go above the second degree, you don't have any nerves. This is what the skin looks like. Then they give you a putty knife and tell you to scrape it off. And if you blow on it, it hurts. But you've got to get it off and you'll have gangrene. When you hear about percentage of burn that's occurred, that number goes higher. That means there's holes in your body. That means you die from infection. That's what kills people, is infection. Getting in there. It doesn't matter how clean the hospital is. The infection. The greater the area, the more likely you're to, to die. A calorie is what this energy is all about. If you take your finger and put it there, you're going to have 1.2 calories on the tip of your finger. Not centigrade or Fahrenheit, calories. This is the way energy will be known. In energy, not voltage. Heat, 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 heat. The higher this heat goes up, the worse it's going to get. If you go above this much heat, there's nothing can stop it. That they know of. Here's a real low level. It's just a long sleeve shirt and pants. Here's the next level. The clothing's getting thicker. Now the clothing's got to get thicker. Now it's going to get thicker. 
Now it's going to get so thick that you have to have an air pack in there to blow air into the suit. But that's, that's going to resist 40 calories of heat. It can be caused by fault current, duration, all of these things are what cause it. A breaker. You don't when you, you know about breakers, right? Briefly, I'm going to tell you this. All of these things you don't know about a breaker, so make sure I've got until what time so I know. Quarter till two. Okay. Get another half hour. Good. Okay, here we go. He's going to be done. First minutes. thing is, you better be careful opening things under load. If you open something under load, it has to be rated to open under load. Otherwise, it's going to explode. Now, how do things open under load safely? Very fast. Speed. Next thing, I'm going to show you what time current curves mean. You have no idea what these mean, but they, they control time. Torque value. You've got to be able to torque the wires down so it's on the breaker. Short circuit rating. Now, here's the beginning of your understanding about what short circuit rating is. If this is a breaker, and downstream is, is where this is feeding, that's where the arc flash is going to be. Now, you know fault current's going to come in the building, right? The fault current's going to go through this breaker. This breaker has to have a amp interrupting capacity that is equal to the fault current that's going to go through it. If this is not rated, who wants that? I'm going to skip. You never do it on a Sunday. Right? There, there, there's his uh, license plate. So if you are, uh, he, he talks for about 20 minutes about breakers and, and that. And if you want to look at it, it's a very good part of it. But it's just, I know it's about time to leave. So I don't want to keep you. There's the answer to your, uh, can everybody read that? Huh? This is the license plate that I ask you to. That's his license plate. So that's a quiz question. Basically, are you here today? You Are you alive? That's it. And then if you look it up, I'll give you 10 points extra. If you look up what something of significance about what that is, because that's that is the book that has all the laws in it, I'll tell you that much. It's the it's the book that describes all this stuff. It's the it's the NFPA. It gives you the description of what you can and what you cannot do. So I want you to know that name, NFPA 70E. So anyway. Answer that on a piece of paper. I think it's quiz five. I'm not sure whether it's quiz five or quiz six for you, but whatever. Just say quiz and uh, your name. Hand it in if you would next a week from when you come back Tuesday, and that gets you 20 points on a quiz. And um, I'll see you next week, two weeks. Have a good vacation.